I know it's very difficult for a lot of you. I feel you because we've experienced that as well. And for me on my YouTube channel, this is also where I found my niche is that having a background in fine art, having a background in commercial photography, how do I blend the two and produce something beneficial? Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Gabriel Leung. This is Q&A number 10. And we're gonna talk about finding your niche or your niche, the unfair advantage as a creative individual. How do you find where you stand in the world, where you stand in the marketplace? For those of you who are starting off, who are thinking about freelancing or thinking about the longevity of this creative path as a creator, as a professional maybe, this might be the episode for you. The only thing I could share, kind of how my journey went, what kind of path it led me to where I am right now, some of the hurdles I might have overcome or the turning points at some point that I had to make some choices. So I strongly recommend you to click on the link down below to download my free creator startup guide to really find your niche, find your unfair advantage as a creative individual. Stay tuned and watch to the end. There are different nuggets that hopefully you can bring home. And so let's get right into it. If you're new to the channel, my name is Gabriel Leung, an artist, photographer, educator, and also a business owner. I've been doing a lot of videos on visual language and photography, bridging the gap between art, photos, and the video community, image making at large. And I never really spent so much time talking about who I am and what gives me the authority or the knowledge to talk about this particular area. I was born and raised in Hong Kong. I have two older brothers, the youngest son to my parents. I am a husband to my wife, who is also my business partner. We co-founded the Light Particle Studio that focused on concept-based art productions, photography, and video productions. I am also a father to our eight-year-old daughter. I'm a Protestant Christian. I believe God is the greatest artist, designer, and creator of all things. I believe we're all broken and we need God's grace and hope. So as an artist, I've done solo exhibitions and group exhibitions. I had the opportunity to share my work alongside with other really talented artists from different parts of the world. So I think it's easiest to share my first love for art. Growing up, I tried learning piano just like any Chinese family would probably a cultural thing that Chinese families, every child at some point, the parents wanted them to learn piano. And uh, it was so tough because everything was a clear cut between right or wrong. You press the wrong key, then it, it wasn't following the note. There's melodies, there's rhythm that you have to follow. Very controlled in a way. So my parents introduced me to an art teacher. That transition was life changing for me because it was no clear cut of right and wrong. It was an open minded environment and there's just self-expression altogether. There's some guidance in some way, trying out different techniques, trying out different ways of expressions. It was life changing. And so I fell in love with art from the very beginning. This is around like age six or seven. Even when my family moved to the US for a bit, for five days in school, I spent one day, particularly in a gifted school just for kids, particularly good at sports, art, I think math. It was just amazing. I spent the whole Thursday making art. I was exposed to the dark room early age. That was like nine, playing with uh, pinhole cameras in high school in Hong Kong where I continued to draw. But art wasn't really the focus of any school curriculum. I wasn't in a school where people would think that you can turn that into a career. Finished high school and applied for an art school in Philadelphia in the US. Main things that I learned from art as an early age. The one thing is that if you put in the hard work, good results will prevail. Even if it's a difficult picture to render, it was a difficult proportion to get, it was a difficult design project that you want to go through, people would see it. It was the most satisfying when my peers and my teachers would praise me. And it translates to how I kind of continue to move forward when I hit a wall. If I put in the hard work, good results will prevail. The second point is never rush into perfecting and polishing a very small area of a project, of a drawing, of a painting, of a design, of a music that you're working on, of a video. But look at the whole picture and continuously 
progress all from zero to 50%, 70 and 80%, then start fiddling with the most exciting part, the finishing touches. This is the part where you show off how you differ, where you stand out, where your unfair advantage is, your niche. I know it's important, but don't jump into it. Bring the whole project up to a certain level all together so that you see the big picture, you step back, take it all in before you go in and perfect every single detail. This is what art taught me at an early age. I take my art quite seriously. Art is a personal discovery, it's a personal way of expressing my thoughts and my reflections in relation to what's happening in the world and what's worth sharing to other people, resonate with their lives as well. My personal language in art usually revolves around mixed media such as photography, video, installation, sculptures, drawings and paintings. I kind of explore different mediums and what can express the idea best. If you're interested in art, leave a comment down below and let me know if I should make another video about my personal work and how I see art in relation to the world at large. My journey of becoming a photographer was also interesting because I went to art school with an intent of studying graphic design. Found that was the easier answer to my parents when I get out of school. And not to disrespect to anyone who is a graphic designer, it's a really difficult and interesting career to seek. But for myself, I found photography to be a kind of hybrid option between the artistic world for self-expression and the commercial world of sustaining as a career, making a living. I eventually switched to photography. Well, my first serious camera was from my dad, a film automatic camera, a Nikon F601, I believe. It worked magically, especially through school. Eventually, I bought an analog camera. My journey to photography throughout my time in school was highly focused on fine art expressions and not a lot of commercial knowledge learned because it was a fine art school. After graduating from school, I assisted a photographer in California for about nine months, almost a year. You know, just being an intern slash assistant, doing everything from curling the, the wire to wiping off dirt, prepping for a shoot, packing the van, and just from the back end to the front end. A lot of the things I didn't know in school, I learned from the internship, a very fruitful experience. I had a good boss. He gave me as a feral gift of a Hasselblad body even today and I still shoot with it and it's very encouraging and affirming as well. The journey after internship was coming back to Hong Kong and I didn't want to work immediately. Uh, my parents, you know, just sticking ads onto my desk and say, you know, maybe apply to this one, apply to that one and eventually apply to a photo studio, a portrait studio that focuses on family portraits, but also do couples and singles or pats. It's a UK company where I worked for four years, almost like a nine to five, where I met my wife. We were both photographers and eventually promoted to senior photographers and we managed a team of photographers where we trained and managed their creative output and also the sales. This is the time when I learned most about creative studio management, um, how to manage sales, how to deal with customer complaints, and how to really polish customer service skills. And eventually we realized that there was no more to learn. It's time to find our new path. We didn't know where to go or what to do, and so we just quit. We got married and we spent one year in Japan uh, doing a kind of working holiday visa. And we traveled a bit. We did some freelance work while we were there. We learned Japanese sporadically, taking a break from work that we spent in the studio. Because I applied to master programs in fine art and eventually I got accepted, moved to Scotland, UK for two years of a, a fine art master program. I focused on my fine art study, getting deeper into conceptual and philosophical questions on my practice and how to really use art as an expression that I can truly reflect what I think. And during those times, it was kind of nomadic. Uh, we had jobs from different networks here and there. Whenever we go back to Hong Kong, we also have shoots that where we have to rent a studio and uh, organize the art direction, styling, all of that. After graduation, I spoke to my wife, why don't we start a photography studio? This is what we know what to do all along and we want to be our own boss. We want to go back to a nine to five. And so why don't we take that leap of faith? 
Upon returning back to Hong Kong, our bank account was almost down to zero. And this is where we started our studio at that point, the light particles. We're still standing uh, 10 years later today. If you're a photographer working professionally, if you are a photographer who would love to switch to freelancing full time, you're still working in nine to five, leave a comment down below. You know, let me know your struggles or let me know how you became a photographer if you are right now. What kind of journey did you go through? I would love to hear more and I think the community would be uh, appreciating that as well. Well, as a business owner, the co-founder of a studio. To be honest, we never thought of ourselves as a business person. When we hear the word business, it was like the most remote thing in the world. And we had no interest in it. As someone who has been in the creative and I learned a lot about fine art, culture and history, I want the furthest thing away from a very capitalistic thinking of making money and profit, whatever is not business. But when we first started, I thought to myself, uh, my wife is very focused on creative and what can we create to make it interesting, artistic and different from people. And I was all for that. But my concern was that how do we sustain, how do we turn this into a viable life project? together. And so I was concerned because there's only two of us and we're both in it together. It's not like one person is still working on nine to five. We're still bringing income to go through life, uh, paying rent, putting food on the table. Two of us in this together, I better make this you know, sustainable. I sat down and looked at all our experiences. We're definitely in our 30s already. Some photographers start in their 20s. We're kind of behind and late in the game. We're nobody in the market. And so I looked at all our net works whatever content we could find and I just sent like almost 100 emails out reaching out to people and say you know we just started this company and we focus on this and this this is our portfolio take a look it would be great to meet you and have an opportunity to work together and not a single reply it was just pure crickets it was like no clue what the market felt like nobody says oh thanks we don't have any project right now like not even that nothing and so it was discouraging for anyone who is more pessimistic it's it's hard but to me it's like oh great i just eliminated one channel of marketing and saying that this doesn't work anymore in 2013 like that was just not working so let's move on to something else let's try a different way let's use social media platform it, we use facebook and it's it's free you know you just post anything instagram wasn't that popular at that point but i spoke to my wife and say if we create good work people would come to us so we tried to create some self-initiate projects that we can dictate how you know interesting and how uh, artistic the work could be and we did photography we did video we did hybrid style of animated gif and it was looping as well and so we tried to do different things that we thought was interesting we collaborated with uh, other designers and stand out in the market show your unfair advantage show your niche show how you're different the way you approach a project how you execute and present all of these things shown through social media the first two three months we had no photo shoot at all no business it's worrying you know if you're both in it together if you're working solo you're still living with the parents you know you kind of have a safety net but eventually you know business did come uh one at a time through different networks friends family Fast forward 10 years later, we're never cold reaching any leads. There's always referral contacts. People who might have uh, heard it from another colleague, 99% are from referrals. I would say maybe 1% are just cold reaching out people who've seen our website or social media and reaching out to us. We are blessed to have business and sustained even through COVID. We're very grateful for that. What it meant being a business owner. Obviously the journey was never smooth through all these 10 years. We've made a lot of mistakes and we learned from them. But I can just clearly say it now is that being a business owner is an entrepreneur. When you think of yourself, not just as a freelance photographer, but an entrepreneur, your mindset changes everything. Every decision that you make, every move that you do, every action that you take. Um, just for example, how you think about quoting people, how you think about contracts, Contracting, how you think about um, having a safety net for if when the client wants to just pay the deposit and not pay the final payment when there's complaint that you have to deal with 
when you try to keep a good relationship and not always uh, look at the black and white of terms? How do you educate your client to have a good management of expectations? All of these are very different mindset. We learn a lot through our mistakes from learning how to charge people to how to scale our businesses so that we continue to work, but we work maybe a bit less and bring better quality and value to our clients. And so entrepreneurship is probably the key to our development throughout these years of sustaining and not just protecting the business, kind of reaching out and getting every opportunity that comes our way, but at opposite end of really just fanning out mismatched clients, people that might not even know why they're reaching out to us and making sure that they find the the right person and this is not the place to be. I think that was a really interesting learning curve. And over the years, we were blessed to be able to collaborate with a lot of creative individuals and clients, really having their trust on us to turning a project from nothing to something, sharing our vision and gaining their trust to really realizing that vision was big for us. And at this point, we're comfortable of saying no to projects. And we know that some projects are mainly for developing our portfolio. We know that some projects are probably more for profit to sustain the studio, have a good gauge on how to separate different efforts to make the best out of each project. Throughout our journey running the business, there wasn't really a particular manual or guide to go from 10 years ago to where we are right now, which we're really comfortable, be creative, but also bring in income to sustain. And there wasn't a manual for that. There wasn't someone who was continuously coaching us and guiding us. We had some advice from here and there, some relatives were in business consulting, but they never understood the creative business and how production works when it comes to the conversation between the clients and us. If that's speaking to you and if you're struggling with something similar, I just felt this passion that I should put some of these thoughts down and make a guide uh, and a little bit of checklist. I think the simpler, the better. And so that you can just click on the link below and download, get that guide so that you can have a better start, particularly for photographers and videographers, freelancers like you who are just starting off or has been working for a few years, but you're still struggling. Download the guide, find a sweet spot to sustain your passion for creativity, be a blessing to other people who have entrusted their projects to you. As an educator, my journey was a little different. Education always had a special place in my heart. Both my parents were teachers and professors. I always thought to myself, I'm introverted. My personality is not really being up on stage or at the front of a room and talking to people and teaching people. I really respect all of the teachers and professors that I had the privilege to encounter in my life. And so I always thought to myself, is that really something for me? But I always had this idea that I should give it a try. After doing a few solo exhibition or group exhibitions, I'd be invited for an interview at an art school locally. I went to the interview and got the job and started teaching part-time at an art school, which is for a uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts. But I was teaching kind of installation art type of elective course. Even though it was in Hong Kong art school, it was accredited by Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, which is an Australian school. And uh, I enjoyed teaching every bit. It was new to me. I had to prepare my own lesson plan. I had to prepare my own materials and think of how to get the students to be engaged. But I had a good time teaching because I found satisfaction. They can feel my passion when I prepared my classes. They can feel my passion when I really engage in conversation with them. Some of them even came to me to discuss about other projects that they had in uh, their major uh, classes, such as painting, sculptures, photography, ceramics, etc. They were also excited to hear the different perspective that I could give. That was really affirming in a way and uh, really kept me going. I enjoyed the time critiquing with my students, also enjoyed just expanding their horizon. Anyways, I, later on, I switched to another art school, the Savannah College of Art and Design, an American school that's quite career focused, I would say. And I was able to teach art in relation to photography. So it was a fine art program, both for bachelor's and master's students. Photography was major, but mixed between fine art and also commercial photography. Skills 
skill set. Moving from purely fine art education to a more hybrid art and photography education was、uh, an interesting twist. I had to really rethink my lesson plans and adapt to what kind of students I was having and what kind of questions and answers that would be most beneficial to their time. It was fun and rewarding. It was also challenging because I needed to fulfill a lot of the school requirements. I needed to fulfill some of the teaching duties, and eventually I quit. Teaching due to a bit of、uh, mental fatigue, and I needed a rest、uh, from teaching. And the studio was becoming more and more busy at that point. Teaching was a good way to have a part-time income to kind of sustain us. But when the studio got busy, we should shift our priority, and I went back full on focusing on the studio work with my wife. And I think that was a good move. Fast forward until the time around when COVID became a pandemic. I watched so much videos on YouTube around photography and art, and I was fascinated. I, I didn't know that such a big community talking about photography, sharing different skills, teaching about how to become a freelance photographers or videographers.、And、I was just fascinated by all these photographers and filmmakers. All of the, the videos are really well made. I was really intrigued by how YouTube can become a platform for learning. However, I found that a lot of the videos fail to talk about why the five tips and tricks works. What is the kind of psychology behind it? So that if you use that skill, use that technique, it will change the way your audience read your image and receive your work. And so I found that little pocket where I should really be able to contribute as an educator, as a creator, someone who is practicing in the professional world to really share a bridge between art and photography. Like what is really missing between that gap? And soon enough, I was convinced that I should start my own YouTube channel. That becomes my new educational outlet, and I hope that for those of you who are watching, that this is the reason why you are here and subscribe to the channel. Because I'm hoping to really deliver something different from the mass market. The five quick tips and tricks, like you've probably seen a lot of those videos, and it does help you to get there fast. It's more like a problem solving, even camera reviews. I do respect those videos to get to a certain level, and you want to get even better. That bottleneck, if you want to get. Over that hurdle, I believe you might need something even better to really leverage that knowledge, and that knowledge would help you to pivot into something even greater. And if you have a longer vision for your photography and video,、uh, if you have that passion and vision, I strongly encourage you to subscribe to the channel, like and comment to help the algorithm, and also just share it out because there are other friends out there who might be beneficial to find this channel helpful to them as well. So help me out on that. To be honest, I believe I've come a long way, weaving my way through art, photography, building a business, and to becoming an educator on and off, and now becoming a YouTube educator. This really helped me to find my niche in different areas. To be honest, my first important niche was when we established our studio. How do we stand out from others? And I think a lot of you clicked on the video because you also want to ask that question for yourself. And to me, was that the interest in art. For me and my wife was really strong, and we are craving to show people that we can produce something that's quite different. And different it doesn't sound really positive or negative; it's just different. And it's such an important thing that we hold on to because every single project we believe that there is a substance, more like a concept, to affect the art direction and affects how you use photography as a language to express art. And so, what kind of lens you're using, what kind of lights, what kind of exposure, how you Edit. All of that are framed by that substance, that very concept that you develop. And so our niche is more on the mental and not on the hardware. I know it's very difficult for a lot of you, and I, I feel you because you know we've we've experienced that as well. And for me on my YouTube channel, this is also where I found my niche is that having a background in fine art, having a background in commercial photography. How do I blend the two and produce something?
and beneficial. And so this is kind of like my niche for my YouTube channel. It's not easy to answer that question. So I strongly recommend you to click on the link down below to download my free creator startup guide to really find your niche, find your unfair advantage as a creative individual. I would have bullet points, simple charts, get you started. It's super helpful because when I started, I never had that and I had to learn from my mistakes. I had to converse with other people and learn from others, and which is all great. But if I had a guide, I could have arrived where I'm at a little quicker. I'm not really an authority in anything, but could be just one or two steps ahead of you guys. Some of you who might want to speed things up and take things further, I'm more than welcome to jump on a free coaching call with you just to get some clarity. My email is in the about page within the YouTube channel, gabriellung.jpg at gmail.com. And I just want to let you guys know that I'm super thankful for every one of you who are watching my videos. Have a great day, guys. Stay healthy, be creative, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.